In a moment, we're going to be joined by author Chip Ingram. You know, I grew up in a Christian home. My father recently passed away at age 90. But I can tell you, looking back on my time with my mother and father, as a child, I was taught the biblical foundations of truth, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I'm grateful for it. But today, many have never been exposed to the truth of the Bible. And I think we could all agree the truth has experienced a very interesting journey, especially in the last half decade. So Chip Ingram, could you tell us about the road truth has traveled over the last number of decades? You know, I love the way you stated that question because it has traveled a road. And I have to say, I'll, I'll make this a brief answer, but it's something that I'm passionate about. I studied it extensively. I actually did my master's thesis at West Virginia University uh, talking about the philosophical basis of absolutes or truth. And so let me, if you will, and you know, forgive me if we go back historically, but in the Renaissance, something big happened. The foundational thing that happened at the Renaissance, man instead of God became the center. And so it was humanism was birthed out of that. Later then, in the Enlightenment, instead of revelation, God's truth is, uh, dictates what people believe. It became man's reason. Well, when you take those things and multiply 100 years and another 100 years, uh, by the mid-1800s, German philosophers, uh, you've heard words like Nietzsche, but Hegel, um, Jaspers, others were beginning to say, wait a second, uh, there's no real truth, and existentialism uh, was beginning to be formed. Uh, some of the kind of crazy parts of existentialism by the time it made it to this country was John Paul Sartre and basically said, there's no right, there's no wrong, you only validate your life by experience. Well, with regard to uh, what happened in America, uh, Darwin uh, began, actually he was a theology student, believe it or not, and, and Darwin began to talk about evolution and he began to think about, you know, is there a way that these things have happened? And, and, and while Darwin is talking about things evolving, then you have Einstein talking about a theory of relativity. And he was speaking scientifically, but relatively, relativity became a real buzzword. And so at the turn of the century, you had Huxley and some uh, people that were atheists beginning to form this whole way of thinking about truth, that there's no absolute truth, that it's only validated by experience. There is no creator. Uh, man is the center. Man is the core. Now what you need to understand is that began to infiltrate into the seminaries of the day, the William and Mary's, the Harvard's, the Princeton's. And by the 1920s and 30s, we had what we called the, the modernist controversy, where people were beginning to say the Bible isn't God's word, and, and the Bible has parts that are true and parts that aren't. Well, by the time the 50s of the beatnecks the 60s existentialism, and then pretty soon it was, you know, make love and not war. And this uh, relative existential truth was applied to sexuality. It was applied to uh, what's right and what's wrong. We had the development with Sloan of situational ethics. And all I can say to you is that this truth road has developed to the point where what we have today is whatever you think is true is okay for you. And who's to tell you what's right or what's wrong? So whatever you think is true is okay for you. And who's to tell you what's right or wrong? Those are powerful statements, Chip, and uh, powerful questions and really reflective of our culture. As a pastor through the years, I've seen people question truth. And maybe as you're watching, you even hearing Chip or hearing me and thinking about this book, you've wondered to yourself about truth. We, we know you have people who ask you from time to time about the truth, especially if you're a person that finds truth in Jesus Christ. You might have family or friends who might agree or many might disagree with what you define as truth in your own life. Well, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if I have found a more valuable book on this issue of truth and how it applies to culture than this book right here, Culture Shock. It is a resource that we want to get in your hands. We're committed to resources here. We cannot put our heads in the sand and cry, woe is me, the world that I grew up in is changing. Uh, no, the Bible is, is, is true for eternity and has application for us to, to respond lovingly and graciously to some of the toughest and for some frightening, most frightening issues of the day. We want to respond not with heat or argument or argumentation or unkindness, we want to respond with a spirit of love and tell people that we love Jesus Christ and we love them too. But we need to know what the issues are. And so here is a book that can help you find what the issues are and provide some wonderful answers based on the truth of the Word of God.